the Muslim Vote Organisation. Now, we saw these scenes the other night. We'll have a look at him the other day, uh, in a minute. A guy called Mo Mothin Ali was voted in uh, as a Green candidate in a ward in Leeds, you know, yelled Alu Akbar and says this is to raise the voice of Palestine, to which uh, people in his ward probably said, well, what about bin collections? Uh, what about the potholes in the road? It is this increasing syndrome uh, that more and more political figures uh, are standing for Gaza, standing for Palestine. Now, I want to get this straight. In a democracy, that's OK. But not if you stand uh, as a Green candidate and you end up actually being a Palestine candidate. Uh, the Green Party has called these a uh, few candidates to meetings today to discuss this issue. Uh, and uh, I know that Lord John Mann, the anti-Semitism advisor to the government, he has called for meetings as well with the Green Party about what looks like a kind of infiltration of covert Islamists posing as Green councillors. And I think you could probably say it's probably happened to the Labour Party a, f a few times as well. Uh, as I say, it's, it's not anti-democratic, but it is worrying. Yeah, it could be. Let's see what they do when they're actually in their local offices. Um, I'm a big believer in um, direct democracy, um, whereby the people should always have a say in the political process and in particular democracy. And we get the, the candidates that are voted upon. You know, that's the principle of democracy. But the other side of democracy is that our elected representatives have to serve in the best interests of their local communities who they're representing and fundamentally the people are paying their wages. You know, we've now got, it's not just on this issue, we have many, many different issues. We've got a lot of uh, political candidates, and MPs and members in government who I think are failing in their primary concern to, we should be their primary concern, to serve the people and focus and listen on what the main concerns are around the country nationally, but also locally as well. And that's particularly relevant to constituency MPs and also local elections. So let's see what these candidates come up with in terms of looking at local issues in the round. If they don't do that, then they deserve to be held to account. Because when you've got an elected representative on a local level, mm -hmm. local elections or constituency through national elections and so on, there is a number of issues that have to be focused on in the round. And if the elected representatives are not focusing on all of the issues in there, and of which there are many. We've talked about many of them previously. We're still going on with the cost of living crisis. We've got crumbling infrastructures. We've got public services that are rotting away. And people are struggling to make ends meet. And therefore, they're wanting some answers and solutions from our elected representatives. And at the moment, we are not getting that at all levels. We're getting politicians who seem to be serving their own best interests, but not the best interests of the people they're supposed to serve, the people who pay their wages. So going back to, to this particular issue, I think at the moment it has to be wait and see. But I am, I am, I am you know, I'm, I'm someone who is, you know, sympathetic to the Palestinian um, concerns, have been for many, many years. But this is a slight this different issue. This is about, I'm also concerned that we're getting a lot of politicians and candidates who are not serving in the best interests of the people. Yeah. And that is one of the reasons why right across the country, people feel disenfranchised with the political process at all levels. It's not just a problem with Westminster, it's also local government as well. They feel that in a time of difficulty, and we're going through a lot of problems at the moment, a number of different levels, we're not having our representatives who are looking at the problems and coming up with solutions, workable solutions in the here and now and into the future that will help the people they're supposed to serve. Uh, indeed. Let's uh, remind ourselves of uh, uh, Mothin Ali's moment of triumph uh, when he was elected to his ward in Leeds. Uh, take it away, Mothin. We will not be silent. We will raise the voice of Gaza. We will raise the voice of Palestine. Allahu Akbar! Uh, I'm just wondering if that is part of Green Party policy, to raise the voice of Palestine and raise the voice of Gaza. I mean, in fairness, I mean, this syndrome came to the fore when George Galloway won Rochdale. And in fairness to George, that's what he campaigned on. And you can do it.
You can campaign on free, you know, free Palestine, uh, stop the war, etc. That, that, that's perfectly all right. And George uh, didn't try to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. He got elected. I think there are concerns about that, that uh, our democracy gets uh, hijacked for sectarian interests. But you're allowed to do it. That's democracy. I just don't, I'm not sure what Mr Ali's campaign comprised of, uh, but his victory speech didn't sound much like Green Party policy to me, which means uh, he is hoodwinking the electorate. We have to wait and see. Um, I agree the optics aren't particularly good in terms of, you know, articulating all the concerns in the local area. I mean, uh, you know, it, this applies to all candidates. I mean, this doesn't look particularly good, but it applies to all candidates. If they're elected, the first thing they should say is what they're going to do to help the people who elected them on all aspects, not just one single issue. I mean, you could argue that that is... That, that's happened in, you know, I don't want to be waterboutery here, but it does happen with other parties as well, where sometimes the candidates give up the impression that they're a single issue. Yeah. Um, and so there's an element of tribalism that's attached to all of that stuff. But maybe I'm being a bit old school here, but I'm a firm believer that we don't really want candidates who are single issue. We want candidates that are multi-issue, that are basically addressing the concerns of the, the constituencies or the mm. local authorities. Mm. That's what we want. And at the moment, we're in danger on a number of different issues of almost having, I think, a kind of demagogue political process whereby individuals, whatever the issue is, are going down the tracks of one issue. And they're sweeping up support, and of course if they get in, that's democracy. Mm. But it would be heartening if the candidates, in the process of the run-up to the election, mm. and then when they're elected and beyond, looked at the problems in the area that they're representing in the round. Yeah. And at the moment, the problem we've got in this country is there is so much apathy about our political process because we're not getting candidates who are looking at the problems in the round. This country, I think, is in a difficult place right now. Yeah. And it's heartbreaking on a number of different levels because I think we have the ways and means and should have the infrastructures to flourish as a country. But the reason we're not at local level, right up to national level, is we've got too many candidates who are either focusing in on one particular tribal line of politics or just completely ignoring the concerns of of voters right across the country. And that is why people are giving up hope of the political process. And that's a dangerous place to be. When you end up with a political vacuum, which is, I think, what we've got at all levels right now, then you end up with certain individuals exploiting the situation. But as I said, I would caveat this. Let's see what happens over the next few weeks and months with these candidates. If they are wholeheartedly representing their constituents' concerns and doing something about it for the benefit, then hats off to them. Yeah. But we'll wait and see. See, uh, I don't like the fact... Uh, I, I don't like the syndrome of candidates saying, you know, I'm campaigning for Gaza, I'm campaigning for Palestine. I don't like it, uh, but I don't mind it as long as they're honest. Fair play to George Galloway. He didn't ever pretend that he was interested in all that much apart from Palestine and Gaza. So I don't mind that. I don't like it, but I don't mind it as long as they're not lying to the people and saying, I'm the green candidate, you know, I want clean air, I want windmills, I want farms, uh, but secretly all he wants to do is get elected and then start banging the drum for Gaza because that's dishonest. So what I think we've got to be careful here is uh, to try to avoid the dishonest hijacking of our democracy. I agree, and I think there needs to be almost a, a new social contract in democracy, whereby our politicians, before the election and of obviously after, need to be much more accountable about what they're hoping to achieve in office. You know, this is serious stuff, serious times, and we need some serious solutions to a lot of serious problems. <laughs> Seriously. You're right about that. <laughs>